RCC is a software for the design check of reinforced concrete columns to AS3600. Design checks are performed sequentially for strength, fire, core confinement and shear, all with the click of a button. Rectangular, circular and complex column shapes can all be checked. The RCC software is very simple to use. The input parameters defined very quickly here in the bottom of the screen. So the column height, the, uh, the concrete grade, the clear cover to the outside of the ties and the longitudinal steel are all input. As we change various design parameters, uh, we can see that the uh, material quantities, the bar spacings change as well. The program automatically calculates the number of laterally restrained bars or the number of ties that the number of legs of ties that are needed to satisfy the detailing requirements of section uh, 10.7.4.1. So as we can see that is switched on and that will automatically be performed. So in this case, even though they are not shown, we need ties with four legs running in the YY and two legs running in the XX. So this is all automatically calculated. And when we hit solve, the program will simply calculate the spacing that it needs to satisfy either core confinement requirements and shear requirements. Now, going to the loading, to perform a strength design check, we need to have a value input in N star. So switching off fire, we can see that in the applied moment values here, we haven't put anything. The program shows us here the minimum moment values based on the applied axial load that we have and the concrete dimensions and then the value underneath that this m star x m star y value top and bottom is what is called the design moment so what will be used in the uh, the, the design checks by default if nothing is input the program will put a moment in single curvature however if we put in our own values the program will match the sign of the design moment to the sign of the moments that we've input. So please note we use um, we use <coughs> finite element sign convention, which can be seen by checking this loading box here. Shows us uh, if our column is in single or in double curvature. So deleting them to put it back into single curvature. We'll switch on the fire loading as well. Switch off ultimate. For a fire check to be performed we need to have a value input in the N star F value. And just like the ultimate load, we have uh, applied fire moment, and then we have minimum fire moment and design fire moment as well. We specify our required FRP, and we can also choose to reduce the effective length under fire for table 5.6.4 as well. So we, know we don't have to pick uh, which table to design it to, be it 5.6.3, 5.6.4, 5.7.2. The program will check all three tables for us sequentially or when we hit solve. In this case, we've also put in a shear load. So the, um, the column will be checked for shear to section 8 of AS3600. Hitting solve, the program automatically checks the column for us for strength, fire, shear and core confinement, both the top and bottom section. So at the bottom of the report here on the right, we see the summary, so some material quantity summaries and the summary for strength, fire, core confinement and shear. And we see that we're passing in every single case. We also see the safety factors for the passing, so the safety factor being the um, the length of the loading line to the intersection with the MN interaction diagram divided by the length of the loading line to the loading point. So in this case we're greater than 1 therefore we're okay. We also see that we have X and Y shown separately. So what this means is that the column has low eccentricity of the applied load so it satisfies the requirements of clause 10.6.3 and we can check each direction separately. So if we go to the relevant section of the uh, report, so strength, we can see that we satisfy clause 10.6.3. Now the MN interaction diagram is shown here on screen. So we calculate four rectangular columns, the primary X and Y directions, both for top and bottom. Uh, as this, in this case, the loading is symmetrical, so we're only really interested in the top. And we have the biaxial curves for ultimate and for fire. And if we're also interested, we can also see the 3D render as well. 
but the loading line is only shown for biaxial. So going to the primary directions, <coughs> we see that because we have minimum moment, the capacity under fire and uh, strength is exactly the same. So it's exactly the same for all three tables because in the X direction, the column is short, including for all of the three fire tables. The various loading lines can be switched on and off here as shown. The special confinement zone can be switched on and off like so, and we can also view the critical section points, so squash load, decompression, balance point, and pure tension point as well, if we're interested. Going to the Y direction, we see for the ultimate condition that the column is slender, but for the fire condition, the column is short, because the uh, table 5.6.3 allows us to reduce that effective length. Uh, similarly, for 5.6.4, the column is short, However, for 5.7.2, the column is slender, so we have the matching capacities for ultimate and fire again. Now going to the biaxial curves, we see that we have separate curves for both fire and for ultimate, so all automatically considered by the software. Uh, however, we don't see the special confinement zone for the um, biaxial direction. Why was this? The column satisfied clause 10.6.3, therefore we're not checking the biaxial xy direction, uh, hence we're not plotting the special confinement zone in this case. Going to the fire tables, we also have the option now of the um, looking at the curves for the various tables, so 563, 564 match, 572, the curve is slightly different because the um, basically it was slender in one direction and not the other. So all automatically considered by the program. Uh, looking at fire, pressing on the fire report, scrolling down to the bottom of the fire table, we see all the various detailed results here which we won't go into too much detail about, but we see the fire check summary. So for the column to pass, basically the top section has to pass and the bottom has to pass a fire. And because we've satisfied clause 10.6.3, we have to have top X at least one of the tables passing and in the Y as well, and bottom X, bottom Y at least one pass in each. So in this case, table 563 is passing in, in um, all, both directions and uh, top and bottom, and the other ones are failing. Hence, we receive a fire pass. Now going back to the Y, switching off fire. Our loading point is in the special confinement zone. So if we go to the core confinement checks, we see that the program has calculated a spacing for us for the bending moments outside of the confinement zone of 240 millimeters and then the program automatically calculates a spacing based on the tie diameter of N12 and the number of vertical and horizontal legs that are needed to satisfy clause 10.7.4.1 and um, satisfy the core confinement criteria. So a spacing of 180 millimeters is needed along the length of the column. As we have applied shear load, the program will also check uh, shear requirements to section 8. The shear load, however, is very low, so uh, minimum shear spacing is basically going to satisfy the requirements to section 8. So we check the top shear in the top X, so 300 mil is OK, top X, top Y, bottom X, and bottom Y as well. And the final spacing used in the column along its full length is the minimum of the um, spacing needed for shear and spacing needed for core confinement. But what we have done, with the click of a button, we have checked the top and bottom section of this column for strength and for fire. And based on the input tire diameter and the detailing requirements to section 10 and to section 8, we have determined a tire spacing that is needed to satisfy core confinement requirements and shear requirements. So this concludes this video. Thank you for watching.